It all began in the early 60s. A thermal clothing technology that is changing the way people work, play, even survive in the cold. And now it's available to you. Articles praising and explaining the technology have appeared in Popular Mechanics, Sports Illustrated, Mother Earth News, and many more. This technology was so revolutionary that in December of 1989, Popular Science awarded it their best of what's new in science and technology. We're here today to show you this exciting technology. We call them our thermal johns. They'll be warmer than anything you've ever been able to buy before. And not only that, but they could very well save your life. Now, we've selected a local freezer in a warehouse, as, as is obvious from the setting. And what we're going to do is ask uh, Kim to come in. We have a couple of helpers today. We're going to outfit Kim in, in our thermal johns. There's the top, Kim. Here is the bottom. And, of course, we're, we're going to need to put just a light shell on top of that. And we have someone else that we're going to outfit. John, why don't you come on in here? Now, this, of course, is the best that money can buy right now. This is fleece. And over here, we have the well-known Thinsulate. John, why don't you take that? And let's not forget the Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex is one that uh, is very popular right now. We're going to outfit John in this. We'll put Kim in the Thermal Johns. And we'll have a little surprise for you here in just a minute. We're going to show you what we're going to do. We need to get some dry weights. And we're going to do that right now. Now, once we get Kim and John into the freezer, what we're going to be looking at is the amount of moisture their systems will handle. One system will build moisture, one system will lose moisture. And in order to be able to evaluate that, we need to weigh the systems. We're going to do that right now. We've asked Brian to be our official observer today. Now, these are the thermal johns. Brian, why don't you get us a weight on those? The scales, by the way, are accurate to two-tenths of an ounce. Three pounds, two ounces. Three pounds, two ounces. Kim, why don't you come on in and get your thermal johns here? Now, don't go too far because what we're going to do is something real exciting here, and we'll show you that in just a minute. John, come on in. We're going we're gonna to outfit you. And, Brian, why don't we get a weight? Now, this is the Thinsulate, the Gore-Tex, and the Fleece. We'll get an official weight here. Seven pounds, zero ounces. So seven pounds even. Here you go. Now, John, the dressing room is just around the corner. Why don't you go ahead and, and get the world's best on. Kim, come on back in. Now, what we're going to do is going to be real remarkable, and it's going to be impressive. And we're going to do something very unusual, maybe even outlandish, with Kim's Thermal Johns. Kim, go ahead and put your Thermal Johns in that bucket right there. And we're going to have Brian come back in. Brian, come on in. I don't know if Kim was ready for this. We're going to take this two quarts of water. We're going to saturate Kim's Thermal Johns. Go ahead, Brian. Why don't you get down there and, and get some water on those Thermal Johns. Okay, Brian, you got those thermal johns good and wet now? Yes. Okay, why don't you bring them on up? Let's see the water there. Okay, they're plenty wet. That's absorbed quite a bit of that. Kim, now why don't you take these? Are you ready to get outfitted in this? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> take them right over here, and we'll get them weighed. We'll get an official weight on them. Now that we've completely saturated the Thermal Johns with water, we need to get an accurate weight. We've put it back in the same bag so everything's equal. Brian's going to get a weight for us. See what the differential is. What have you got, Brian? It's five pounds, twelve point two ounces, or two pounds, ten ounces. So we have two pounds, ten ounces of water in the thermal johns. Kim, are you ready? Let's get you outfitted. Go put those on. We're inside of our commercial freezer now, as you can see. Temperature still well below zero. And momentarily, we'll be talking with Kim and John and describe a little bit further about what this test is all about and how the thermal johns could very well save your life. We have brought into this commercial freezer some exercise equipment to demonstrate a very important principle, and that's the ability of systems to handle moisture. Now, if you remember, Kim's system, she's wearing the Thermal Johns. We're totally saturated in water. She just has a shell, just a, just a typical shell on top of it like you'd wear for, for jogging. John over here, of course, has the military's best, as we described it, the Gore-Tex, the Sinsulate, the Fleece, and some very low-temperature boots. What we're going to attempt to demonstrate here today, and I think we'll be able to do that quite effectively, is the system's ability to handle moisture. Now, Kim because she's active, will be driving that moisture right out of her system. Now, if the moisture were to remain in that system, it could become life-threatening. We'll demonstrate how effectively the thermal johns move moisture. Now, John, on the other hand, as he works out, is going to be building moisture into the system. He came in dry, and he'll be getting wet. He'll be getting a little bit damp. Now, as that moisture builds in that system, he's going to get cold. And at some point in time, and we'll be there when this happens, that system is going to begin to crash. Point being that if your system can't handle moisture properly, it could become life-threatening. 
And that's the significance and the importance of how well the Thermal Johns can perform for you. We've asked Kim to step up here for just a minute. I want to show you how effectively the moisture is coming out of the system. You'll see it in the form of steam. And Kim and I will just hold our breath right now. Is that amazing? Okay, we're back. And hey, Brian, how long has it been now that they've been exercising? Hour 20 minutes. Kim, how are you feeling after an hour 20 minutes? I'm fine. I, I have not been cold. You haven't been cold since you came in wet? Just my face was a little chilled from the exposure, but it warmed right up after, when, as soon as I started moving. So I, I'm, I'm great. You're doing good. Let's, let's talk with John. John, how are you feeling? I'm a little, little chilled. My back is, is cold, and my feet are starting to get cold too now. Okay, so you're starting to feel the moisture build up now inside the system. Yes, yes, I am. Okay. Now, don't forget, John came in dry. And we'll be back in just a little while to check on him again. We asked Steve Mayer to join us with us in the freezer today. We outfitted uh, Steve a number of weeks ago. Uh, Steve, of course, is a world-class paraglider, has the nation's largest paragliding school, Cloud9 Paragliding, also an extreme skier. After we outfitted you, Steve, what was your experience with the Thermal Johns? Well, you outfitted me in, in August, so I was a little skeptical at first, but uh, I took it out on a day where it was above 90 degrees just to see how it would feel. Um, and to my amazement, it really wasn't that hot. I wasn't sweating in the outfit, and, uh, which was really pleasant. One of the unique things with the sport of paragliding is we often start on the ground, or we always start on the ground, where it's really warm, and we fly up into the clouds where it's always cold. Uh, so the first week that I had it, I found a day where the cloud base was 10 degrees above zero, and that's the day that I chose to try it the first time. And was standing on launch where it was 85, 90 degrees, and really wasn't that bad, but of course it was cold, and I was sweating a little bit, getting some moisture going. And I launched, and I flew in a matter of about 15 minutes up to cloud base where it was uh, below zero. It's about 10 degrees, according to the weather forecasters. And it was great. Uh, didn't have any problems with moisture transfer. I'm used to wearing multiple fleece layers where I'm always venting. I'm flying, trying to stay active flying, and I'm also trying to push the, the moisture out and right, unzip right. things and zip things, which is a pain. And this was wonderful just to be able to wear this light shell over the thermal johns. I got up to cloud base and I really didn't even think about it. I honestly forgot about it until I was up there for a while and then realized how just I, I felt really natural. I didn't feel that, uh, that temperature differential. And that's one of the things we wanted to demonstrate is, is with the thermal johns just being worn as, as the base layer, we could say underwear, you're able to put, as, as he has on right now, he's just got the thermal johns underneath his flight suit here. Yeah, just right underneath there, and, and you'll be able to do the same thing for skiing. Exactly. Yeah, for skiing, it's going to be wonderful as well. So uh, simply, it's just a utilization of, of the shell material. You're able to swap the shells out and, and just handle the, uh, the cold that way. Exactly. Okay, we're back now. Uh, Brian just informed me it's been two hours and 20 minutes into the test. We've had Kim and John. They've been jogging a little bit, doing some jumping jacks, and staying active as well as working out on the exercise equipment. How are you feeling, Kim? I feel quite comfortable. I'm, I'm really amazed that I came in with wet clothing, and I've never been cold. And you're I'm, just fine. You're I'm staying fine. warm. Yeah. Good. All right, let's talk to John. John, how are you feeling? The same activity levels, and uh, how are we doing? Ah, uh, cold. Um, my... My back and my, my friend are cold, my, my hands are, are cold, I have to keep them bunched up, and my toes are cold, and not, uh, only if I'm not moving, that's when they get cold. So if, if you're not moving, then you're in trouble. Yes, yes I am. I'd rather be wearing what she's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to come back in just a little while and chat with them further. We're at four hours, 45 minutes into the test. It's time to get John out. He's uh, going into hypothermia. We have some problems. I've asked Jim Phillips to uh, evaluate this clothing system. Jim, would you open this up and see what's been happening inside the uh, Gore-Tex and the Thinsulate? Well, the thing that we always see inside of this, and you can see right here, is the amount of frost that's built up on the inside. And if you can notice the wetting that's occurred on the surface of this, inner garment, this insulated garment in here, how wet it is. Take a look at all the frost. Now, I'm going to slip these off. We'll get you out of here in just a second so you can see this. But look at the ice on the sleeves, the arms. Pull the other glove off over there. Turn around for just a second, John, here, and you can see 
It may show up some of the wetting that's gone on. And then take a look at the ice inside of this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bag this up real quickly and all the rest of these things, and we're going to measure how much is in here. Now we're dropping some frost. So, John, why don't you go ahead and get out of here because you're ready to get out, aren't you? Oh, yes, I am. John, how are you feeling? I'm frozen. I'm very cold. Okay. Go ahead and get out of here, buddy. Four hours, 45 minutes into the test. We just sent John out. He had been driven into hypothermia, and we're here with Kim. Now, Kim, you came in wet, and you've been working out. You've been doing a little jogging and, and those types of things, and you've been pretty, pretty good all the way through. Mm -hmm. Like I say, the only thing that's cold on me right now really is my face. My lips feel frozen, but the rest of me is pretty, pretty comfortable. Jim Phillips, of course, was the developer of this system. Now, Jim, tell us a little bit about what happened here today and, and why Kim's okay and why John was not. The real story is not keeping people warm so much as how to keep people dry. If you're in for any extended period of time in the cold, moisture buildup is what will get you into trouble. In fact, if somehow we had closed the doors and these two people had to stay in here, John really probably would not have survived if he had been in here another several hours, let's say 24 hours. Within 24 hours, he probably uh, would have died. Yet Kim, although may have been some discomfort and you get tired of being in here, would get through okay because the moisture's got out, you can stay warm. It's moisture management that is the key, not just about staying warm. But that system is, that's a thousand dollar system. That's the best that's out there. I know. Moisture management is things that people do not understand. The manufacturers, uh, they don't, really don't understand it, haven't maximized it. Now what we're going to do to finish this off is we're going to take uh, this, uh, all of her TJs off and what she had on, put those in a plastic bag, and we're going to measure how much moisture is in there. We had a weight at the beginning. Now we'll see what's left. It isn't all gone yet. We weren't in here long enough to get it all out, but a big portion of it will be gone. And the message is you keep staying in here, it keeps going away. You'll completely self-dry even at below zero in conditions like this, which to me, I think is still amazing, even though I've done this for years. Kim, you ready to get out of the freezer? I am. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's go get some measurements. On the lighter side, we just wanted to, while we were still in the freezer, outfit uh, Kim and some other things that, that can be worn with the thermal jobs. Now, in this case, you know, maybe a farmer going out to milk the cow, we're able to do that. Other applications would be with ski gear or snowmobiling. Uh, with skiing, you can put the thermal johns on underneath your ski parkas or underneath your snowmobiling suit. A lot of applications for the thermal johns, and as you can see, we're not doing anything extreme other than just putting on different shells. We're back where we started at the weighing table, and Brian is going to weigh these for us. Now, this is the, the system that John was in. We're going to get a weight on that and see how much moisture buildup there was in that system. What have we got, Brian? 8 pounds, 2.6 ounces. From the seven pounds, that'd be one pound, 2.6 ounces. So we picked up one pound, 2.6 ounces, just of perspiration in that very expensive system that John had on. Why don't you pull it out? We got the, there's the, the fleece. There's the Thinsulate. And of course, we've got the, uh, the Gore-Tex. All right, now let's do the uh, Thermal Johns. Put those on the scale. Okay. And what do we got? Four pounds, 11 ounces. Four pounds, 11. That's a loss of? Uh, one pound, one ounce. So one pound, one ounce of water was transferred out of this system. These are our thermal johns, the TJs. And there's the system. And of course, the uh, shell is also in there as well. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate your help. Now, I might mention, Brian, come here just a minute. I might mention that the whole time we were doing this test, Brian, of course, was, was outfitted in the Thermal Johns, and this is all he had on, just his denims and this white shirt. Now, did you stay pretty comfortable through the whole thing? I did. Yeah, I, I wasn't cold. Occasionally, my hands got cold when I was doing stuff and took my hands out of the gloves, but other than that, I was fine. Incredible system, isn't it? It's great. Let, let's go to the bottom line of this thing again. Now, the way John was and where he was at, the stage of hypothermia, he didn't have long before he'd been in serious, serious trouble. Yeah, he was losing ground and losing ground fast. And once you start that downward plunge, it accelerates, and he would have been in trouble very, very quickly. And again, if he'd had to stay in there, he probably would not have made it. I mean, you have to get to where you rescue him. He was, uh, he was slipping into some serious hypothermia. Uh, and that was all uh, partially just because of that moisture build up in the clothing. Because as the moisture builds up, the heat is going to escape very rapidly. You've got to stay dry. That's the magic of the TJs. Well, we weren't here to do any kind of a uh, fashion design program. But uh, what we did do is show people how to be safe. And I guess the bottom line really is the Thermal Johns, as we said at the very beginning, could very well save your life. 
Thermal Johns are intended to be used as part of a complete system. Appropriate headwear, handwear, and footwear must be worn as needed for the conditions you may experience. Now, this information is being provided without written, expressed, or implied guarantees as to performance or safety. It is the responsibility of each individual to use his or her best judgment concerning the performance and safety of this equipment for a given situation. The manufacturers and distributors of the Thermal Johns want you to understand that your personal safety and well-being is in your hands. Now, this video presentation was designed to demonstrate the unique moisture handling characteristics of the Thermal Johns under controlled conditions and to compare their unique performance capabilities with competitive clothing. You should never intentionally use them wet or in extremely cold temperatures that are beyond their normal operating range.